I want to hydrolyze some sucrose today because, well, that's what everybody's doing. And you'll notice we hydrolyze something. That means we mix it with H2O with water. Let me make that O a little bit bigger. H2O water plus sucrose. And it breaks down into glucose and fructose, as you can see down here, glucose and fructose. And as a result, we also release some energy. This is an exergonic reaction. The system loses 7 kilocalories per mole, which means that 7 kilocalories per mole is are released, and they can carry out other reactions in the body. However, you'll notice that th as the, ener the arrow upward means energy is increasing in the system, you need to actually put some energy into the system here in order to get energy out. This bit of energy we need at the top is called the activation energy. And in order to activate this energy, we usually use ATP or heat or some other source to create the activation energy for this system. However, wouldn't it be cool if we had a shortcut? If there was a way you could just take some energy, lower the amount of activation energy you need, so instead of going all the way up here, imagine if we could go down this way. And in fact there is. We have an enzyme called sucrase. Sucrase, and when we mix the sucrase with the H2O and the sucrose, it actually lyses all the sucrose into glucose and fructose in just a few seconds, whereas without the enzyme, it takes a while. So what is an enzyme? An enzyme is a macromolecule that works as a catalyst. And so now you just have to ask, well, what is a catalyst? I'm glad you asked. So a catalyst is something that enhances a chemical reaction that makes it take place faster or usually it lowers the energy that's needed for the chemical reaction to take place. But the catalyst itself is not affected by the reaction. In many cases just a sim something as simple as a kind of metal can work as a catalyst. Usually in biochemical processes though we're dealing with enzymes which are often big complex proteins. Sometimes an enzyme can be a type of RNA for example. We ca actually call them RNAzymes but that's another story. But let's say we've got an enzyme here, and suppose it's a big blob of protein, and it's going to have a space where the chemical that it's reacting with can dock into it. So we have the active site of an enzyme somewhere in here, and now we've got our chemical that's going to react with the enzyme. So this chemical is called a substrate, so let's put that in here. And it's going to dock on to the protein, because enzymes are usually proteins, and then the enzyme will allow it to do the reaction more quickly. Now the substrate in our re reaction is what? Of course the sucrose is the substrate here. The sucrose is the chemical that's going to react and be assisted by an enzyme. So you have the enzyme plus the substrate equals a chemical reaction. So enzymes and substrates. So just to review, an enzyme lowers the activation energy or the energy barrier and allows a chemical reaction to take place much more quickly. And an enzyme works with a substrate, which is a chemical that's going to react with the enzyme, and together they make an enzyme-substrate complex. Generally, an e a chemical reaction that is exergonic, that is, it releases energy, it has a negative delta G, is still going to need energy at the beginning of the reaction in order to take place. And the enzymes reduce the amount of energy that's needed.